Uh, we're going to take a look at the scene in Croydon in South London at exactly half past eight yesterday morning. Bro, what happened? Uh, stop. Oh, sorry? Stop. stop. Somebody got stabbed? Yeah. yeah. Just now? Well, look at school. Yeah. Just now? A school girl. A school girl? Yeah, school boy stabbed. So there we go. Uh, a 15-year-old girl had indeed been stabbed to death uh, with a machete. Uh, she was on her way to school and she's been named locally as Eliana. Witnesses say she'd just got off the bus in a group when she was attacked and the bus driver and other passers-by tra tried in vain to save her life. She died at the scene. It's believed there'd been an argument with a boy, a 17-year-old, who tried to give the girl or one of her friends some flowers. He was aged 17, uh, believed to be known to the victim and was arrested shortly after she died. She's been described as very comedic, with a bright future ahead of her. Chief Superintendent Andy Britton appealed for those with information to come forward. This is every parent's worst nightmare. And I know the officers who responded this morning, along with our emergency service colleagues, are devastated at the victim's death. This is an emotion I share, and I know people across Croydon will be feeling the same. The victim's family has been informed, and our thoughts are with them at what must be an incredibly difficult time. Well, this isn't uh, just a one-off stabbing. Uh, the police have said it's every parent's nightmare. And over the years, knife crime has taken many young lives without any sign of the issue being resolved. Fatal stabbings in England and Wales remain at a record high uh, as knife crime continues to proliferate. So the question we're asking this morning, is this Britain's version of America's Gun crime. Yeah, and throughout the morning, we're going to investigate why young people carry knives, how they get hold of them, and what can be done to protect our children. Well, former Metropolitan Police Detective Peter Blexley had very, very strong uh, opinions on this, and it'll be interesting to see if you agree with them. He is basically saying, whatever the sensitivities, bring back, stop, and search. Children, adults, teenagers, People are dying in numbers that is just off the Richter scale and something robust has to be done by the police. I don't want our police doing social work. I don't want our police doing what they so often call community engagement. There's two communities they need to engage with. Number one, victims of crime, and number two, perpetrators of crime. Let's get that territorial support group down to Croydon today. Let's get them on the streets. Let's get them when there is cause, when there is justification, stopping and searching people. And let's get them retrieving knives and arresting people. Well, we can speak now to our GB News investigations reporter, Charlie Peters, who joins us in the studio. Um, an awful story to be talking about this morning, Charlie. Uh, we've spoken to the government in the last 15 minutes. Uh, they talk about how they uh, outlawed zombie knives. Uh, it doesn't seem to be changing the statistics. I think the peak two years ago was a horrendous number, 30 teenagers murdered in the mm -hmm. capital. This is the 16th so far this year. Yeah, the numbers really are terrifying. Now, this is the first teenage murder in Croydon, in particular, since December 2021. But the Met this year has recorded 211 stabbings in that borough and across the entire capital since January this year, mm. 2,290 stabbings in the city. That's a 5% increase on last year. Know, so I it's coming at a wave yeah, of I that really I pandemic of stabbings. I don't know whether been uh, impressed, Charlie, or depressed uh, by yesterday, the amount of spokespeople who were lined up ready to go because they were frequented with uh, knife crime in the Croydon area. Well, and, and the most concerning thing, I think, is we, we've heard from Suella Braverman now that she's reaffirming that she's banned zombie knives and these zombie-style knives, as she's referred to, long blades. She's the fifth Home Secretary since 2016 to reaffirm this ban. Clearly, it's not working. And when I spoke to police officers last night about this incident, they told me that they don't need new laws. They just need the ones that have been introduced to actually be enforced. Mm. This ban came in in 2016. And they say what really helps them, what, what makes the difference for them, is that these knives were actually taken off the streets. Stop and search yeah. takes place. 
And Yvette Cooper, the Shadow Home Secretary, said there's a, there's, a, there's a loophole and you can very easily acquire these knives online. And I would know. I bought two last night. <laughs> you, two last night. How much yeah. does a zombie knife cost? £45 for a set of two, 27-inch knife. And there are plenty more available. Some are out of stock, some of the more menacing-looking ones. So it's more ones. than two foot long. Yeah. And yeah. what checks and balances did you have to go through? I mean, was your age checked? Was your background checked in any way? What was, can you tell us about the website that you used to access these... these what? I haven't gone to them for a right to reply because I only, only bought this last night at midnight. But when I checked online, I mean, it was very easy. I had to just click an age verification box. It was a self kind of yeah. affirmation of my age. There was, no, there was no ID. In fact, they offered a discount for members of the police, which is a strange kind of branding move. Um, I don't think many police officers want to see people buying zombie knives, let alone themselves. So it was quite a remarkable mm. site to go through. And there were plenty more available and cheaper, price, cheaper, cheaper prices available elsewhere. You see, I, I reckon of us three were school age, uh, if you think back to that time, and you could conceal a... How long did you have? 24? 27. And there's 27, 27, yeah. 27 inch knife in your bag. You wouldn't do it because you'd be frightened about being caught. Well, I wouldn't have done or, it mm. anyway. But yeah, you just we just wouldn't do I it. I got you wouldn't public do transport it. to school every day from the age of eleven. But the, the world's changed. It's not as safe in the capital. Well, what, I Peter to, Blexey yeah, was talking about stop and search, yeah. right? And he was saying bring it back. Karen says the youngsters are allowed to carry knives as they know they can't be searched. And uh, Neil says it's no good just trying to prevent young ones carrying knives. They need to be educated on the whole social and emotional well, I effects. I think that's of this. a really interesting point because the the topic of stop and search, I mean, goodness knows how many times we've covered this over mm. the years, and look, we haven't heard the view reflected this morning arguing against it. And I think we need mm. to put that point that a lot of people, particularly from ethnic minority backgrounds, um, say that it is uh, discriminatory sure. um, and that it, uh, it actually makes their lives a living hell. You can have respectable people going about their business, uh, parents, fathers, hardworking, being stopped, humiliating mm -hmm. experiences for no other reason other than the colour of their skin. That would be the argument against stop and search. But if we're talking about this actually holistically, not just in terms of how we clamp down on it in terms of prosecutions, there's clearly a social element to all of this. And Damalola Taylor's father coming out last night and saying society has broken down. Yeah, and, and I think lots of people feel as though stop and search is that kind of interventionist method that does create so much controversy that they are looking for alternative methods because it's so caught up in a political storm. People don't want to refer to it so often. And you know, Sadiq Khan in 2015 said that he wanted to clamp down on stop and search with all of his power. And then that's been a kind of a political back and forth ever since. Yeah. But as that fray goes on, Teenagers are being murdered. Charlie, what about knife amnesties? Why don't we talk about those anymore? They've been successful in the past. Mm -hmm. When we have a story like this, which shocks the nation, I mean, a 15-year-old girl in her school uniform, mm. going to a well-known leading private school, mm. um, in the middle of morning rush hour, you know, this is the sort of story that makes us all pause. Why is there not a call this morning, do you think? Do you think that's something that needs to happen? Are they successful as, as a tool to try and bring down the number of weapons on the street? I think most people will be seeking reassurance today that more tools are being deployed and more strategies are being used, not just by the police, but also by councils and schools to really capture where this intervention is going wrong and where knives are flowing into the streets more easily. I mean, on the success of stop and search, we know last year, for example, that over 20% of all stop and searches led to further action. And it's not just knives that they care about. It's also drugs and the gang violence and the culture that fuels that conflict, that gives rise to a need for somebody to hide a 27-inch blade in their yeah. bag. Well, we were saying, uh, Peter Blexley uh, was saying this morning that I was saying, well, why don't we just have knife scanners uh, at the entrances of schools mm. and whatever. And he said because they deposit, they hide these knives uh, in bushes or whatever before mm. they even get to the school and then they pick them up afterwards. It's, well. it's, it's been quite remarkable noticing the rise of knife scanners in public places over the years. I mean, Notting Hill Carnival for the first time had knife scanners this year mm. and that didn't seem to do an awful lot. We saw, you know, these zombie knives being brandished in the street. It was, I think it was a relief. Yes. It, was, it, was, it was quite sort remarkable that nobody, yeah. nobody was, was murdered considering how kind of flagrant and open they were with these swords in mm. the middle of, you know, West London. Well, Peter Blexley describing it as a tide of teenage blood running through our capital. Um, we've gone through uh, the, some of the issues around all of that. We'd love to hear from you at home how you think think we should be tackling this. Are you in favour of stop and search? Does there need to be a knife amnesty? And do you think, as Damalola Taylor's father has said, that society has broken down? Uh, you were listening to Charlie Peters, who's GB News's investigative reporter. Thank you very much, Thank indeed, you, for your, your take on things. Thank, Thank you very much, indeed, Charlie.